How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Just Nobody's Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. And today we're doing a podcast. Woo! If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, please hit the like button. If this video gets to 3,000 likes, I'm going to control your Tinder for a whole day. And then I'm going to show on the podcast all the matches we get. That's not a good idea. So make sure you guys smash the subscribe button <laughs> and you can see all Tinder, all his Tinder matches. <laughs> also, comment what you want us to talk about next week. As you're going to see throughout the video, we actually took subscriber suggestions that they commented last week. And we put it above our heads. And we talked about it this week. So make sure you comment what you want us to talk about next week. So today we're going to be talking about the deadliest toys that we may have all owned during our childhood. Just to be clear, these toys are toys that were sold in stores like Target, Toys R Us, all around the world. Yeah. But they ended up being deadly. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because like, I'm sure like you guys or any of your friends have definitely had these toys. These toys could actually be in your homes today and you just don't know. Big shout out to Conspiracy on TikTok. The account is amazing. Go check it out if you want your mind to be blown. Let's get into it. Woo! So the first deadliest toy that I'm going to talk about is the Hannah Montana card game. Hannah Montana card game. So in 2007, there was a Hannah Montana card game where it was it was about like the show, Hannah Montana. Okay. And it was labeled as the Hannah Montana pop star card game. Oh, wait, I think I remember this. It was like it had the card back with a little plastic piece right over it. Yeah. And the cards were right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. These cards were sold around the world, like everywhere. I mean, Hannah Montana, when she was on TV on Disney Channel... She was huge. Oh, yeah. It was like the biggest thing. Right. So everybody wanted to buy her like merchandise. But it turns out that these cards were actually lethal and deadly. Wait, how were a deck of cards lethal? They sent the cards into a lab to be tested for lead, right? Oh. And lead is, could be very deadly. Yeah. And they found that the Hannah Montana card game actually had 75% more lead than what is considered to be like safe amount of lead. Are you serious? 75 times the amount. Dude, what the heck were they thinking? How does that even happen? I mean, lead poisoning could lead to death. It could lead to like a bunch of different health issues. And these were in kids' toys. But get this, CBS did an article and they took 28 different Hannah Montana toys and products and they actually found that all 28 of those products had high levels of lead in it. Wait, so it wasn't just the deck of cards? No, it wasn't just the deck of cards. It was like all Hannah Montana stuff. Yeah, there was a bunch. There was like purses. There was a bunch of things that people were buying at stores that are actually deadly or... I don't want to say the word deadly, but they are could be very deadly. Dude, what the heck? Isn't that scary? Dude, that's freaky. Ain't the best of both worlds for the most for some. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the kids' toy aqua dots are actually deadly? Aqua dots, like the little like bubbles that you like press on. Yeah, so we all had aqua dots growing up, right? It was like the like the little thing with the little gel dots and you can make different designs yeah the dots turns out it's one of the most dangerous toys to own are you kidding me and i feel like we still have one in our house i feel like we do so back in 2007 this toy was sold in toys r us target all the different stores right it was one of the most popular toy items that year yeah i i do i vividly remember the commercial so what happened was they had to pull it off the shelves and stop selling it wait why but before they did that though right okay a lot of them were sold yeah they found that one of the chemicals inside the aqua dots we're actually part of like the date rape drug like family of, of chemicals. In a kid's toy? And they found that some of the kids that swallowed the beads actually got sick and were, they were put into comas. Comas? I get it. You're not supposed to put the aqua dots in your mouth and swallow it. But as a company, right, you have to figure if this is going to be a kid's toy, right? Yeah. Kids are going to put it in their mouth. Right. Like, yeah, you want to say choking hazard, right, because they're small. But you can't make it lethal. Where, yeah, because kids will do it. Kids are going to put it in their mouth, right? Yeah, you can't stop it. No matter what. Isn't that scary, though? We literally yeah. held them in our hands. We had, yeah. I mean, what kid's going to read the package and say, like, don't swallow? But also, it doesn't even say, like, toxic. You know what I mean? Okay, but did you know that Cabbage Patch dolls are actually one of the deadliest toys? What? A while ago, they came out with a Snack Time Cabbage doll. Okay, and the Snack Time Cabbage doll would actually have a mouth that would chew on, like, plastic snacks you would give it. Okay. But the, the doll didn't know the difference between biting the plastic and a human. So what would happen was the kids would put their finger in the mouth, and it would aggressively bite their finger. What? And it would literally cut their finger open. Oh, my gosh. It was, like, it had that much force? Yeah. So it was getting, their fingers were getting stuck, and their hair were getting stuck. Oh my gosh, that's so sketchy. Who makes a toy like that? Okay, so obviously a lot of parents were complaining, right? So they decided to offer a $40 refund for the 500,000 people that bought it. Oh my gosh. Only $40. Here, we injured your kid, but here's $40. Yeah, here's some, for some Band-Aids and some like Neosporin. <laughs> yeah, like what? Dude, I want to get one now to see like how strong like the yeah. bite is. Like to get, to get a kid's hair stuck in the mouth, it was like clamping their hair. 
And for, for it to get stuck, it's got to have a lot of force. Dude, who even invent such a thing? That's crazy. That's disgusting. Dude, it's freaky, too. The doll looks freaky. Dude, I want to get one. No. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> okay, but we all remember the Easy Bake Oven. But the Easy Bake Oven was actually one of the most deadliest toys, too. No way. We all had Easy Bake. I mean, we have one. We have one here. Yeah, okay. So the Easy Bake Oven, right? Whose idea was it to give little kids a legit oven? Gordon Ramsay. Okay. He wanted to chef it up. <laughs> so these kids would obviously have accidents of them burning themselves, right? And it would also come with like little appliances, right? So their fingers would get stuck in the appliances. There was even a case where a girl had to amputate her finger. What? Because it got stuck. No. She had to cut off her finger. No, that's, oh, that's sad. It's crazy. Just from an easy bake oven, that little oven. Gosh, and it's like meant to be like a safe like thing for kids to get into cooking. Exactly. It's supposed to like give you like a little like preview of like what cooking's like. Oh my gosh. It's their fault. They literally label it as like, yeah, that's a true. safe way to cook. That's true. Okay, so next, remember sky dancers? So it was like the little thing you would like pull the string and the, the fairy would like spin and fly. Oh yeah, like you'd like launch it in the air. Yeah. So there was actually times where kids would pull the string super hard and it would aggressively spin the fairy, okay? okay. And I it think was, I used to do that. Yeah, we, we all did. Yeah, that's the only way you put that thing. Exactly, it's no fun if you spin it with yeah. lightly. Parents were reporting that their kids were actually getting mild concussions from it hitting them in the head. Yeah, concussions. You know, it did hit pretty hard. But, but this is what's crazy too, okay? It was giving them temporary blindness. Oh my gosh. It was hitting them in the eyes and it was giving temporary blindness and it was cutting their corneas. Dude, what? Yeah. That's so sad. There was also times where it would, it would like lacerate their face. Yeah. So there was like cuts on their it face. It was a dangerous toy when you think about it. It was. I know I hit myself before with it. Right. Answer. But it was never that extreme. No. It's an airborne Beyblade. Exactly. Airborne Beyblade. Dude, Beyblades used to be the... Dude, Beyblades. We should be talking about Beyblades. You know how many times I cut my oh ankle my gosh. with a Beyblade? You had to go to the ER from a Beyblade. That's right. Remember, you got hit right here. I remember. We had, like, the little dome thing, and it went in the dome, shot up, and hit you. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I remember that. That traumatized me so much. Dude, I, I remember totally that. forgot about that. It was a now. metal one, too. I remember. Yeah. Remember when Beyblades used to have, like, the metal? Like, dude, those things were so heavy. Dude crazy heavy i never played with beyblades after that no we, we we threw them all away dude where's my money beyblades we got to go <laughs> after them <laughs> just joking around did you know that playing in certain sandboxes in like certain areas were actually deadly a sandbox okay so in some areas you have to really be careful because you know we think it's always just sand in the sandbox right but before they used to put a bunch of stuff in sandboxes where you have to really be careful what did they put in a sandbox besides sand? So basically back in like the 1950s, it was like very common for them to put like chemicals in sandboxes like asbestos. What? And at the time, people had no idea that asbestos was bad. Uh-huh. So basically asbestos is like chemicals that are like airborne. And they're like these little fibers that like last in the air for, it could be like up to days. Yeah. And basically when you're standing inside, like say you're in a sandbox with asbestos. Right. It's like these little airborne fibers that when you inhale it, they can live in your lungs. And it's a chemical, right? So it's going to kill you. Yeah. They put that in sandboxes? Yeah. So basically some like kids in Australia, like back then they didn't know what asbestos was, right? So they were inside the sandbox playing, but asbestos was inside the sandbox. So they all died before the age of 40 because the asbestos inside their lungs like slowly killed them. So that's Are why you, you got to really be careful. Like if you're in a sandbox, you probably shouldn't let your kids be in there because like you never know what's in there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude. I mean, dude. Think about it. The sand's just sitting there. You never know, like, what people do. That's true. Like, the night before, right, they could put a bunch of stuff in there. But you would think, like, a sandbox, right? All there is is sand. You don't know what people do to the sand. No, you don't. Oh, dude, that's freaky. I mean, you could pour chemicals on the sand, yeah. right? And it would just be absorbed in the sand, and you wouldn't even know. Oh, that's scary. That's why you got to watch out. You got to watch out. You never know. Oh, my God. Okay, but we all remember this one toy. I know you remember this toy. It was the fingerprint analysis kit. Oh, yes. Okay. I, I grew up and I had uh, the detective kit. Exactly. So that is actually one of the deadliest toys, too. Really? Okay, so you know, like, the little powder they would put on their thumb and you would get, like, the thumbprint? Yeah. So that had asbestos in it, too. Wait, Daniel. You, you had it. Dude, I used to use that thing a lot. I know. My I, dream at one time was to become a police officer. You went to the police station and did it. Yeah. Dude. So, 
that powder has asbestos in it. Oh, no. And a lot of kids that had it were breathing it in, too. Frick. Yeah. Dude, I had that. No. Are you serious? Yeah, and they were getting extremely sick. Okay, well, it was It wasn't, I don't think it was as much as the, the sandbox. Okay. But, but I haven't been sick from it, so. But there was still asbestos in it. Oh, my gosh. I guess I wasn't really around it that much. No. Nor were I, it was like. Inhaling. You were never like, like sitting over it and just like always having it out. Dude, that's scary though. Because I know for a fact I used to put it on my fingers. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. That's Dude, what... all the future detectives out there, man. <laughs> what the heck? These childhood toys. Toys meant for kids are they deadly. They were toys. Comment if you own one because obviously a lot of people did. A lot of kids own that one. The detective kit. <sighs> and Aqua Dots. I feel like a lot of kids owned Aqua Dots. Yeah, I think it was like one of the most popular Christmas presents that year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you remember Moon Shoes? Oh, I always wanted Moon Shoes. I, but mom and dad never let me get them at all. Did you know that those are actually ranked like one of the most dangerous toys like in the world like that was ever created? Are you kidding me? So remember as kids, like they would advertise it like on Nickelodeon, right? And it was always these kids jumping around with these anti-gravity shoes. Right? It's supposed to like simulate what it would be like if you're on the moon. Yeah. That's hence the word moon shoes. Moon shoes. You watch sh superheroes growing up, right? You see them flying. Yeah. So you think like, wow, this is my chance. This is my chance to be <laughs> Superman. Right? So we'd all want one. Yeah. So basically the company Moon Shoes actually advertised the shoes as like trampolines for your feet. Right. So apparently so many kids got hurt from it. Right. Uh, it actually took kids like it sent to the hospital and like they ended up getting like ankle fractures and like leg injuries. Uh huh. And Moon Shoes never took it off the market. They what? just kept selling it, even though like I don't know the exact number, but a lot of kids were getting hurt. When you think about it, though, Moon Shoes would hurt a lot of kids. Like just the just the d thought Dude, of it. Yeah, exactly. You're bouncing around unstable. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like you're going to break your ankles. I found this on a law firm article. Right. So. That must mean that a lot of people were suing Moon Shoes then. Yeah. Right? Because it was like a law, like a law firm. Right. And you know what's crazy? I don't think any of the kids in like the commercial and like the advertisement, they were never wearing helmets. No. They were playing hopscotch and stuff like yeah. bouncing around. Like it was nothing. Yeah. Maybe they got hurt. Maybe those kids got hurt after the commercial. Dude, that's crazy. I always wanted moon shoes. So we all know Ariel and how she's like the little mermaid, but she's actually related to a lot of Disney characters. Who? So we know her father, right, is Triton, who's right. like the king of the sea. And her grandfather, who is Triton's father, is Poseidon. And we actually see Poseidon throughout the movie. But this is where it gets crazy, right? So Poseidon actually had two brothers. Okay. And their names were Zeus and Hades. Wait, I didn't know Hades was one of his brothers. And we know that Zeus is the father of Hercules. And Zeus is also the brother to Hades. So this makes Ariel and Hercules second cousins. And Ursula, in the original script of the movie, actually was Triton's sister. Make your Ariel's auntie. Are you serious? Even in the movie, Ursula reminds Triton how she used to live in the same house as him. Even the director of the movie like, wanted Ursula to be Ariel's auntie. And Ariel's actually cousins to a character in The Descendants. You know the movie on Disney Channel? Yeah. So Mal is actually Ariel's cousin because Hades is Mal's father. Wait, what the So heck? Mal, Hercules, and Ariel are all connected because they're all related. Wait, how have I never tried to put that together? It, it's weird to think about because like, she was like the complete villain. Right. But it kind of gives you like Lion King vibes, right? Yeah. Like the Scar and Mufasa. Oh my gosh, yeah. Isn't that weird? Wait, what the heck? <laughs> okay, moving on with the Lion King vibes. Remember the Lion King theory I talked about this week? Oh yeah, that was a good one. That one was pretty crazy. So for everyone who missed it on TikTok, there's a crazy theory about Lion King. Okay, so we all know Nala, but we never know who her father is. Her father is a complete mystery. Yeah, it's kind of strange when you really like dig in and you, yeah, that was a question that was never answered. But there's a crazy theory that Nala is actually the daughter of Scar. Like Mind blow. what? Scar of all people. I know. Okay, so think about it like this. In the entire kingdom, there's only two male lions. We have Scar and Mufasa. Yeah. So even animal experts say that within one kingdom, there's usually two male lions. So it makes sense that it's only Mufasa and Scar. Right. But then you look at all the lions in the kingdom. You look at all the colors of their eyes. Scar has yellow and green eyes. The only other lion to have that is Nala. Because, like, yeah, when you really look at the pictures, right? Yeah. You look at the color eyes, you can definitely tell that, you know, all the female lions, right? They all have a certain color. Right. Right? Even all the male lions. 
but the only people that have the same color like eyes where it's that greenish color mm-hmm. it's nala, nala and, and scar. scar if nala is the daughter of scar and scar's the brother of mufasa and mufasa's the father of simba that means simba and nala are cousins and they end up having babies together yeah like what a little strange but we do not judge here that's pretty crazy dude that's weird right i mean when you look at it how lion king totally tries to make the lions more human right by the way they interact and yeah like, have like human values so it's kind of weird in that sense exactly okay have you ever heard of fish rain fish rain no okay you're gonna think i'm totally crazy but fish rain is actually a thing i don't understand what is fish rain? You haven't answered the question yet. Okay, so USA Today and National Geographic did articles that fish rain is real, and it's literally when fish fall from the sky. Get out of here. Get out. <laughs> what? This has happened like multiple areas around the world. Okay. But it also happened in Texas. Texas is super close. Yeah. It's in the United States. Yeah. So what happens is, right, when there's a storm or like any like thunderstorm or windstorm, it will literally suck up the fish, the frogs, the crabs, and even snakes. What? It will lift them up, right? And the wind will throw them miles from where they were picked up. Okay. And it will fall with the rain. So, so they get stuck in like the clouds? Yeah. So people would actually wake up from like a windstorm and they'll go outside and there'll be fish in their lawn and in their driveway and in their streets. So like the clouds basically like suck them up and they drop them. Drop them with the rain. Oh my gosh. That's weird. Right? So people would like, there's videos of people having like little fish all around their streets. They literally fall out of the sky. Dude, that's crazy. It wow. sounds super crazy, but it's a real thing. It's super rare, but it happens. I, I have to believe it if National Geographic is saying it. Everybody says raining cats and dogs, right? Yeah. But it's raining fish, crabs, frogs, and snakes. Dude, that's really scary to think about. The fact that it like sucks them out of the water, brings them in the clouds, and then drops them with the rain. Yeah. Dude, that's really freaky. It's freaky. Okay, so moving on from that, welcome back to Dumb Ways to Die, where I talk about the weirdest and craziest ways people have died. You're about to either really like this segment or really not like it. <laughs> okay, so we all remember the crazy internet craze, planking. Yes, planking. We've all okay. done our planking in I'm, our life. I'm going to be honest, planking was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Okay, so there was this guy, right? Okay. He wanted to start planking. He wanted to be part of the trend, so he decided to plank on a rail. Okay, on like an eight-story railing. Okay. But what happened was he kind of started to like lose balance. So he started panicking, right? And he slipped off the railing, fell eight stories from planking, and he died. Oh, gosh. What? Okay, I'm sorry. Why would you plank somewhere where you have the chance of falling eight floors? He did it for the TikTok. That's, n- dude, come dude, on. What is he doing? Okay, but up next, this one, oh, this one made me angry when I saw this one. Okay, so there was a guy. He was really against wearing seatbelts. Okay, this is already setting up for disaster. Yeah. He thought stup- seatbelts were the stupidest thing. So what he would do, he would literally write like articles saying why seatbelts are stupid and why we don't need them. Okay. He was then driving his car with no seatbelt and his friends were in the car with him. They got in a major car accident, right? He flew out the window and died. He was not wearing a seatbelt. No. His friends lived, and they were wearing their seatbelt. Dude, just put it on. I don't get what's the big deal of not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, like, it doesn't take away your rights or your freedoms, dude. Just put it on. Right. Like, it's for your safety. Yeah. I mean, you do hear stories, right, where seatbelts, like, could hurt. Yeah. But ultimately, it gives you the best chance for survival, I believe. Well, yeah, because then you wouldn't fly out your windshield. True that. True that. (laughs) So up next, there was like a really big like Kung Fu teacher. And he said his version of Kung Fu was so good. It was so advanced and you could literally beat up anyone. He said, with my Kung Fu, you could literally take on a lion. Dang, must be like Master Splinter, huh? Yeah. So what one of his students did is they took that literally. And they went to go take on a tiger gosh what he said he said lion take on a lion you can't go fight a tiger if you're oh, sorry master he, told he, you he to did go... go fight a lion oh okay okay so he, so no, he, that's funny Leave okay it. so he <laughs> he went to go fight a lion okay because he his master said that the kung fu is so good he'll be able to kill a lion so he went to go take on a lion and what do you think happened 
he got he got messed up. Yeah, the li- he stood no chance against the lion. Let me tell you. Let me let me let me just ask you something. How is kung fu gonna beat a lion? You never know. Let me tell you. Lions don't have a fighting style. They don't care. I know. They're just gonna go head on. Yeah. And your little like any kind of blocking mechanism, the lion's just gonna rip your arm off. Like there's there's like, no there's no winning. There is no winning. Never try to fight a lion. And thank you for watching Dumb Ways to Die. Guys, this week my girlfriend Leia couldn't make it because she's actually doing another application for her master. So uh, she will not be doing Who Side You On this week. So we're just going to move it on to next week. But if you made it this far in the podcast, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And also, 3,000 likes, I'm going to control Daniel's Tinder. You have, yeah. to, you have to tell him. You're going to let me do it. I will let him do it. All right, here we go. Okay, so also comment what you want us to talk about next week. As you saw throughout the video, we actually put your guys' comments, subscribers' comments, yep. above our heads. So make sure you comment what you want us to talk about next week. And we're trying to pick subscribers, so make sure you subscribe. Subscribe. So I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow on TikTok. And we'll see you guys on Friday or Saturday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. See you on the TikTok. God bless you guys. See ya. Love ya.